So welcome to Jesse Young Paulson and Ray Winnig, two Needham High School leaders who recently helped to organize a student walkout and protest. And I want Jesse and Ray for you to fill me in. What was this, uh, this uh, walkout all about? So we originally organized the walkout as part of a broader, more nationwide organization called Queer Youth Assemble. And they had the idea to start this walkout in response to anti-queer and anti-trans legislation around the country, particularly in Texas and Florida and Tennessee and Louisiana, and all of these states that we see bills emerging that prohibit access to sports or to affirming medical care or to parent support of their children. And so we felt motivated as part of the organizers of that to also bring us into our own school community to draw attention and raise compassion and whatnot. So what occurred was a nationwide synchronous walkout on March 11th, uh, Friday, and it occurred from 1 to 1.20 p.m. Eastern time, and so this was adjusted for other time zones. Um, from data from Queer Youth Assemble indicates that up to 19 states were participating in this walkout at the same time as we were here at Needham High. And so in terms of organizing this event here, we were closely working with administration and with connections we have interpersonally through leaders of, as leaders of the Queer Student Union to build support and awareness and using social media to spread awareness of this event and why we're doing it and when it is. So it's, you know, for me, here I am as a school administrator and students should be in school during the school day and here I'm talking to you about a protest, about a walkout. Um, and I'm, I'm happy actually that we're talking about it because I think the issue is important that you were, uh, you were protesting. Um, of course, students, you know, face the consequence for having an unauthorized absence. And yet, I understand that the school staff uh, and, and Principal Seacott were trying to help guide you and support you. Did, did you feel during the, the, the walk on the protest that you had that level of support? Throughout the process, I definitely felt the resounding sentiment, and a sentiment that we share, is that civil disobedience and activism really is a form of civic education for students being able to participate directly or participate in support or engage around issues is a huge component of how we learn and grow in our communities and how we broaden our scope of understanding about social issues. And I think that, that was a sentiment that was reflected in our discussions with teachers and staff and administration who really acknowledged that while the actual leaving of school may not be ideal from an administrative position, they were ultimately sharing the same ideals as we were. We just perhaps had misalignments in how we wanted to execute right. Right. Well, our show you know, of solidarity. Adults like to keep students in school, and yes. that's what we do. And, and you used your voice to say this is an important issue. And it was a nationwide uh, yes, issue. Yes, absolutely. Did, were other uh, districts locally involved? Are you aware? Um, as far as I know, um, one of the Newton High Schools, Brookline, also had a walkout, as well as some other Massachusetts towns. There was an article in the Boston Globe that was published that had discussed many of the other towns in Massachusetts that were participating. So was the walkouts, first of all, how many do you estimate participated and was it successful? What do you think? I would say the numbers in the several tens of thousands. Nationwide. 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 Not here. No, no, okay. here. Okay. here we're like 200, 300 okay. ballpark, yes. not including staff. Absolutely. Although we had a surprisingly wonderful staff turnout. Staff from other schools came in to show mm -hmm. solidarity, mm -hmm. which was incredibly empowering and appreciated. I know Newton South had one a week later because they didn't have, you know, the foresight because they didn't, were never made aware in the way that we were. But, you know, it inspired a lot of collectivization around this issue and around communities to support their queer students and community members. And I think definitely in terms of the success of the walkout, I think from our perspective, it definitely was a largely successful protest in just visually raising awareness to this large crowd of people about the support that we have for these issues and the, what these are and talking about them and opening up this forum to a broader community in Needham. As well as we, Jesse and myself, went as liaisons from the Christian Union to talk to the Pollard GSA and we actually spoke with them and the, the response from those middle school queer students was just resounding just gratefulness about this show of support from administration and from other students and peers who weren't queer at Needham High School. And I think that definitely is a sense of the success of civil disobedience and walkouts and other forms of protest as something effective in creating just this semblance of hope for younger queer people and for queer youth here 
at Needham High. And I think jumping off of that, a lot of the community has said, like, why did you choose a walkout? Why was that the forum that you chose to express all of these ideals, especially when we don't have these same bills or the same the negative same, sentiments? The same uh, bills that the legislature The legislation proposing. is proposing yeah, yeah. in other states. We're in Massachusetts. We generally right. have been a more protective and progressive community for sure. queer folks. We have, it, we have it in law, what, what we'll do, yeah. However, yeah. we know about the efficacy, and that's what Ray was saying, of these kind of public shows that draw people out is that even in progressive states, there is this sense of queer isolation for a lot of kids who got to see this and say, wow, I'm living in a community that even if I personally feel isolated, there are 300 students at the high school who are willing to walk out for 20 minutes and stand together and say, I see you, I care about you, and I'll protect you. And I think the other medium is it demands attention in a way that social media activism never will, in a way that a newsletter never will. Mm -hmm. It demands people to say, why are people walking out? Should I be walking out? Is this a value that I hold? Yeah. And I think and that it's immensely powerful in that regard. I think also in terms of walkout specifically is it's one of, I think, very few ways that students and youth can participate in large scale activism. Because obviously, as Jesse was saying, like social media activism or writing or other forums generally require some other form of adult or administrative or educator support to get out there or are simply not going to be easily able to scale. However, something like a walkout could come directly from queer youth who created the concept initially and who organized this nationwide and from us who organized this here at our school. And I think that was another very important part of saying that this came from youth and it's for youth. Well, I think the, the power of student voice is incredible, which you are demonstrating. And I really appreciate the fact that, that high school age students are speaking to middle school students about these issues because they need mentors. And, and they need people to look up to, and you're providing that, which I think is powerful. Tell me, um, uh, just real quickly, what, what does the Queer Student Union at Needham High School, what, what, what kind of support, what does it provide for students? Absolutely. So the Queer Student Union emerged from what was formerly called the AGSA, or All Genders and Sexualities Alliance, which is kind of a redefinition of the traditional gay-straight alliance. However, we chose to rename it this past year, the Queer Student Union, out of a sense of formal recognition, a lot of you know the other marginalized groups in the school have amazing student unions that allow them to create affinity There's space a black student and also union, to do Jewish advocacy, student union, Korean sure, student sure, union, Asian sure. student union, and it's beautiful work that they do. And we wanted to be able to have that kind of recognition and also like a collective outlet for the school to go to to get advice. Mm -hmm. I think it creates this sense of community power and advisory. And so we changed it to that name. And I think primarily its goal is to serve as an affinity space for queer people. At Needham High. But all are invited. This is all not a space that yes. is just exclusive no. to queer or gay students, but all okay. students are invited. Right. In the same way okay. that the other student unions sure. welcome their allies and co-conspirators, we encourage that as well, but primarily it is a space for people to collect around shared experience. What what would you say as as we kind of as we as we as the conversation wraps up, what do I need to know as superintendent? What would you want to see? in our schools regarding making sure that queer and gay students feel supported, feel that this is a place where they can grow and, and become strong academic students and, and human beings and contributing citizens. What are the things that I need to know that I need to be thinking about as I lead the need in public schools? I think we would say that there are queer and trans students of all ages in all forums in all different aspects of a school environment, whether they are interpersonally or on the playground or in the classroom, in every different class, in every different extracurricular, in every different sport. And so what we really want is for an understanding both of this existence, of that we exist, because oftentimes there is a very heavy culture of silence and shaming and just invisibility around queerness. And so not only that we as students and as youth and as individuals are present in the school system, but that we are an integral part of how it functions and should be included openly and explicitly in our classrooms, in our classroom discussions, in our curriculum, in conversations that we have with our peers and with our teachers and with administrators. And that I think is something that is incredibly critical and that when that has occurred, when we have been able to access affinity spaces uh, such as the Queer Student Union or now the GSA that has recently come into creation at Pollard, that that is incredibly empowering and expanding that as far as possible and as many avenues and forums as possible is truly critical for the joy and the acceptance of queer youth. And I think 
jumping off of that point, also making sure to prioritize listening to queer voices. And I think that that's something that we're seeing progressively become more normalized and more of the precedent. Ray and I have had the luxury of being on professional development panels at both of the middle schools. It's so empowering to be able to go up there and to thank our teachers who created community for us and to be able to say, well, here are areas that could be places for growth, for the inclusion and acceptance and teaching of queer issues and queer people. Well, I, I think what is powerful, again, is that you are willing to share your voice and your experience to contribute to the conversation and the sense of building community, not just at Needham High School, but at Pollard and throughout the district. And what I heard you say is that uh, our, our queer and gay students and want acceptance, they want understanding, awareness, and they want to become an integral part of the community. I think that you are both modeling that for all of our students, and I really appreciate it. I look forward to more. Jesse and Ray, thanks very much for the conversation. Thank, Thank you very you. much.